Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to be going through the Joy and Wonder kit from Spellbinders with Fun Stampers Journey. I think they collaborated. And uh, there are four cards. It's essentially a card kit that comes with stamps and dies and stuff. Um, and mostly everything you need to make the cards. I'm going to be making uh, two of them today. The big dot embossing folder is what we're going to use to kind of make that pink paper stand out. And then these little snowflakes. Uh, and they actually forgot these in the first package. And I didn't even notice because I hadn't used it to go through it. Uh, and then they sent an email saying, oops, we forgot the snowflakes. So you'll be getting a separate package. But I'm just glad I didn't want to use it right away. Uh, I could have always added them after the fact, uh, which is fine. And then you get uh, two stamp sets and the dies that come with them are bright green for some reason, but they are separate and that's great. And I'll explain another thing I love about the dies later in the video. And then we have a kind of a sentiment set, um, but the sentiment on the polar bear card is from the polar bear set and then this one comes from this set it's kind of broken up into pieces and it's got this sentiment style that I really really love and I'll talk about that when we get to that point so uh, this one they suggested taking like white a white ink pad and like rubbing it across the dots and I'm just I don't even have a white ink pad anymore and I'm not into it um, and then I'm gonna actually use an alternate for the snow which is glue and glitter in the example and I'll talk about that. So I won't be doing this exact. Um, so this is one of the cards I won't be making today. But it comes with all of the um, dies that you would need to make the candy cane with the little leaves. And uh, then this one is kind of like a retro Christmas ornament situation. I'll maybe be doing that in a another video, those other two. Um, this video is already pretty long as it is, and so I don't want to have it go too long. And also my phone can only record so much. I'm surprised it recorded this in one go. And this is sped up two times. So I'm going to start with this card. And I am going to magically pause while I run this through. And I'm going to pick the clean side that's going to go on top. There was kind of a smudge on the other side. I'm going to run it through my die cutter off camera and then now we have our dots and this is actually going to get trimmed down because it does have a border around it those are the instructions if you wanted to pause on that and watch or screenshot or look at them i'm going to score the card in half and uh burnish i think people say burnish it when they press down on it um, so we need to trim the sides of our pink dot panel and I could have taken um, I'm gonna take I think an a quarter of an inch yeah a quarter of an inch off of each side I could have taken to like center it better an eighth of an inch off of all four sides but my trimmer doesn't really have measurements in kind of like um, visible to me in sixteenths. It's kind of hard to see. So I just trimmed it. It probably could look better as a background, but I don't think you would have noticed if I hadn't said anything. So I am going to just stick this straight down to the card base. I am going to lift the other panel that we're going to create up on foam. So I just stuck the base down with my tape runner and then we're going to create this silver panel. And first we need to stamp and I'm going to use the Misty, the Mini Misty. Um, the sentiment and the style that I love, I don't, there's just like a handful of things about card making. And of course, I couldn't give you a list right now, but when I feel them, I feel them. A handful of things in card making that just make me so happy and I don't know how to describe it. Um, of course, I love everything about card making, but there are just a couple things here and there that I'm just like, oh, I just love this so much. It just looks so awesome or is so fun to do or insert whatever here. And so in this case, and I've done this on a Mother's Day card with Blonde Fawn Swan Soiree, um, is 
having a pop of a part of a sentiment in another color, especially like a pinky red. I don't know what it is. I just love it. So I am mounting up the rest of the sentiment around it. And we're using my new favorite, my favorite things, extreme black ink, which is handling both Copics and watercolor with ease. I am in love with it. I may never go back unless it goes bad and then I have to find a new one. But this, um, this black with this red pop in the middle is just one of my favorite looks on a card. And when it works, it looks really, really cool. So because I don't want to kind of mess with the ink, just in case it's not quite dry, I'm just going to use glue instead of my tape runner. And also because the glitter cardstock is a little gritty, so I want to make sure it really sticks versus using tape runner. Um, sometimes the texture doesn't want to hold tape runner tape very well. So I'm going to use my foam tape on the back of this. And we're going to support that the best we can. I tend to use probably more adhesive than the average person. Um, I probably could have squeezed three rows on here, but this worked out just fine. And that's enough support for me. So I'm going to center that. I'm trying to center all these things on my cards without shoving my head into the camera view. Uh, or trying to stand up and see over them because of how I film. It's a little difficult. So um, I'm actually going to link below the video from... I'm probably going to get the channel wrong. It's either Spellbinders or Fun Stampers Journey. Uh, where they went through each of these cards... And um, I'll talk about that string in a second. Right now I'm using some small Zots, the flat gooey glue dots. Uh, and I just stuck them down right from their transfer paper onto the card. I'm doing something super ridiculous right now that she was doing in the video. And I was like, maybe I can figure out what she was doing because I didn't want to take the time to watch the video to figure out what she was doing. I'm just going to tie a super simple bow the one that she did, she had this whole like cat's cradle thing going on in her fingers and stuck down like way too much string. I'm sure it looked great. It's in the photo if I show it to you again, if the photo of the sample card. Um, but I just wanted to keep it simple. <laughs> and so I just tied one good old bow and stuck it to my um, glue dots. And now these snowflakes have a foam circle on the back of them, but I want, I decided to add a couple more glue dots to the back and you can kind of see in the reflection there to give it a little more oomph stick down. Um, but I wanted to add some more. I am going to pause for a crazy long amount of time. You actually have no idea how long I was paused for. It was probably a solid five minutes. I refuse to believe that I lost two boxes of micro dots that I bought specifically for the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris die. And so I hunted until I found them. I don't even have a craft room. It's just a dining room. And I had hid them somewhere on one of my, my rolling carts. So I just stuck down another one of the snowflake edges just so it had a little more support. But I wanted the micro dot so it could hide it. A little better. So this is the second card and I am in love with this card and the entire process. It was just so fun and I'm glad I did it today and filmed it for you guys. So there is a card base and they give you a few pieces of white cardstock. I'm actually not going to use that. I'm going to use watercolor paper because they want you to watercolor. And since I've been watercoloring, I have the supplies and I know better and I want to use actual watercolor paper. So I'm going to kind of set that up. You can see I've added my waters there. Um, so I've cut a panel from just the super, super cheap, simple artist's loft watercolor. And in the example card, the edges are rounded. I don't know when she did that in the video. Um, I wasn't paying super close attention. I was just trying to get an idea of these cards. And I have a corner rounder punch that I've had for years, 10 years at least, since I started making cards. Um, it was one of the first things I bought and I used it a lot in the beginning. I think everyone who started making cards any number of years ago probably used a corner rounder a little too often on every card they made because it was fun. 
Um, so I have the watercolor paper. I'm used to using my MISTI this way. I'm going to have to stick it in sideways and go top to bottom, which is fine. We're going to place our igloo. I think I want it a little bit higher. We're going to place our igloo and stamp it a couple times in the same My Favorite Things Extreme Black ink, which is my new favorite. We're going to stamp it once and then just make it a little bit darker and stamp it twice. And then I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to set that aside, give it some time to air dry. I know the ink is probably fine as we speak, but I do need to stamp. Um, I'm going to go clean off that stamp and get my three polar bears. I use the same three from the sample card, get them mounted up. And I'm actually going to trim this paper because it was a little too big for the Misty and put it back in and then stamp my three polar bears this is also watercolor paper the same paper i'm going to stamp them a, maybe a couple times i think i do them twice just to make sure it's a good solid black image and i am going to watercolor the bears as well and they turn out super cute oh my goodness they're adorable um so i actually had this blue palette i was trying to do this blue thing and so i had a palette um, that I hadn't touched yet. And then I have this Woodlands palette that has a gray stone and I'm going to lighten that up for the bears. I know polar bears are white, but they can also be dirty. I don't know. Um, so they're going to be a little gray so that I have something to color because instead of just leaving them white. So I'm going to mix a bunch of water into this light blue that you see me mixing up over there. And uh, I'm going to add quite a bit of water because I want to dilute it down a little bit from where it was. I was using it for a different purpose, obviously not like a sky background in this case. So what I'm going to do, and I will zoom in here in a second, is I'm laying down a wash of clean water. And I'm following the edge of the igloo because I want to not paint the igloo. But doing this wet on wet technique is going to make the sky look... Um, like I want it to, like the sample card. So I'm doing kind of like a, a blurby blobby border, but I am being careful around the edge of the igloo where I want the water to not go into. So what's really cool about wet on wet watercolor is when you lay down a wash of color, you basically, you're painting with clean water. It's just nothing. You're painting with nothing. And then while it's still wet, you get to pick up some diluted watercolor paint and drop that in and essentially just tell the water where to go. Or your previous wash of clean water tells the watercolor where to go. And it makes it so much easier to follow along the path that you want it to rather than taking wet paint onto dry paper, if that makes sense. So hopefully all of that made sense. Um, but since I created that wet line, the watercolor is going to follow all of that. If you know watercolor, this is not news to you. Um, but I am going to speed it up. I think in the example video that I have linked down below, she like waited. She just like, I'm going to set this aside and work on the other card. But I'm impatient and I wanted to finish this. I didn't have time for this to dry. So I am using my heat gun to dry the watercolor, which a lot of actual watercolor artists do. So... I don't feel bad about it. And it also, if you dry it long enough, it kind of flattens out the paper too, which is nice. So I am going to do the same thing for my bears. I am going to take, um, I'm going to set up my color first, a little bit of the gray and dilute that down and then, um, get them wet first and then kind of drop in the gray and move it around and actually turns out looking really cool. So I'm really glad I did the wet on wet first. Um, where his hands are folded is the only place and the first time I have any problem with the ink maybe trying to bleed a little bit, but it actually held up pretty well. And if I hadn't said anything, you might not have noticed or looked that closely. Um, so it did pretty good, but the cons where the concentrated ink is a little heavier 
and it being on watercolor paper may have been a little too much, so I avoided like the nose on this guy because I didn't want the ink to bleed. Um, but it ended up okay. This ink is actually holding up really well. So I'm just kind of dropping in and moving around the gray so it doesn't look splotchy. They are just going to be light gray polar bears. And then our little baby bear. And then um, I'm going to pick up a little more because he wasn't gray enough. He probably could have been whiter because he's younger, but we'll just pretend they're all dirty. Um, and then I'm going to uh, use my heat gun to dry the bears as well. And then off screen, I'm going to mix up a little bit of um, another color from here, which is kind of a reddish, a dark red. But I'm going to dilute it so much that it's going to be kind of a pink. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit and give these... Uh, realistic looking bears some pink inner ears and some cheeks because why not <laughs> so i left little drops of pink water essentially and then i took the dryer to it and then dried it so it i don't know i just thought it looked cute they're pretty cute bears and then i will show you my little cheeky bears and these dyes die cut like a crazy wide border, but I like it. I normally wouldn't like so much of a border, but for the bears, for these bears, I like it. So it works. You'll notice a lot of, I mean, a lot of dye companies um, have a, different borders when it comes to their dyes and cutting out their own images. So instead of the glitter pack that they send with, uh, they tell you to use glue. I decided to use Lawn Fawn Textured White instead. And I am melting this off camera because I wanted to do this twice and I didn't want to accidentally blow all of the powder in front of me or melt it by accident. So I'm melting it like to my left. So I just did that twice. I have a Versamark pen and I did my embossing buddy first and just scribbled the pen where I wanted the snow or the ice ice flow I think it's called she said in the video it's not an iceberg it's like things that they stand on anyway I used my Versamark pen and I did it twice heat, heat embossed it melted it ran the pen again added more powder so I had two little layers of snow the first one was not enough for me I should have stamped this sentiment before I stuck this down lesson learned never because will never learn. And then I am lifting up the bears on foam tape. I lifted up the card panel on foam tape as well, in case you missed that part. And then I'm just placing the bears where they were pretty much exactly on the sample card. And then I'm just going to use just the foam tape that comes with this snowflake for that. And this card is just about done. Super cute. I'm in love with it. I'm going to add a bunch of Wink of Stella to make the snow sparkle like it was supposed to with the glitter and also run some over the snowflake as well. And that will be it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. I will link this kit down below, although it is out of stock right now. I think you can be notified. I'm so sorry.